I mean, at one point I thought it was going to be, what's your Kilimanjaro? You know, like, how do you live bigger? You don't have to climb a mountain, but how do you live bigger? And then I realized nobody's going to read that book unless they think they're planning on climbing Kilimanjaro. So that's not a good book. And one night at two o'clock in the morning, I sat up in bed and said, bigger, better, braver, just like that. I mean, it was a download from the universe. And I know it was a download from the universe because everyone loved it, just like that. You're about to deal with forces you can't possibly comprehend. Welcome to GMP, the great, glorious, and glamorous, aka the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, best selling author and certified self leadership trainer with the John Maxwell team, Dom Brightman. And this is the podcast where authors from around the world help you realize that success is tangible. Now let's get on with the show. Today's episode is sponsored by book number two from Dominic Dom Brightman, Stay the Course, The Elite Performer's Seven Secret Keys to Sustainable Success. It is the field guide to help unleash the elite performer that is inside of you. Cop it today on Amazon.com or heading over to DomBrightman.com and snag it in book, ebook, and audiobook so that way you can take it on the go and get yourself on the go to your northbound success. And today on the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, known as the Going North Podcast, we got another super special awesome human for you today, my friends. That's right, indeed. Another super special awesome human because today's guest, indeed, she's a super special awesome coach times 99 because she's a certified integrative coach through the Ford Institute for Transformational Training as well as the Levin Coach Life Coach Academy. And she's certified as a breakthrough shadow coach that's right folks empowered parent coach courage coach healing your heart coach leadership coach holistic lifestyle coach and bigger better braver coaching and to put the icing on the cake that last was actually the name of her international best-selling book bigger better braver conquer your fears embrace your courage transform your life and prior to her wonderful work as a coach, she's also owned and operated a personal training gym. So that's right, folks. Eight Pack Abs Ahoy, a training gym <laughs> called Tight Ends Incorporated. So she knows what it takes to help people drop that COVID-21. So let's give it up for the one, the only, the NP herself, the natural and perfection and personified, Nancy Picard. How you doing today, Nancy? I'm great. That was a lot you had to just read. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right, indeed. And I was only 30% of it. <laughs> I'm going to have to shorten them down. <laughs> that's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. Well, I hear coaching wasn't in your wheelhouse for decades to come until some setbacks happened. And growing up, you probably thought you're going to be a queen of like five castles, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what? life happens to you right it happens for you and to you that's the that's the hard part is that people always think it's just happening to you but it's really happening for us so we have to just take the lumps and keep on moving on oh yeah that's right indeed that's right even if you have to deal with idiots for 26 years right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I had a really good marriage for 26 years. I'd like to say otherwise, but no, it was great. Okay, that's what I'm talking about indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So my goodness, my goodness. So how was your journey leading up to where you now have coaching in like 10 different metaphorical martial arts? <laughs> it was a big journey. So I was married 26 years. I was really happily married, you know, mother soccer, cross, all that stuff. And I owned this gym and life was ro rocking and rolling. And my life was just how I thought it would be until it wasn't. And I didn't have the tools that I needed to make it to really recover. It took me a really long time. I was the victim in my story and I was very other reference. So when my husband no longer wanted me, I no longer wanted me, you know, I thought that I just wasn't 
uh, I lost all my confidence and my self-love and my self-trust. And so it, I had to dig myself all the way back out. It was a long haul back, but I'm here and I'm here to tell the story and I'm here to share my vision and my growth and how to get out, out of your comfort zone and how to live the best version of yourself that you can be. That's what I want for everybody. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Best version indeed. My goodness, my goodness, of pulling yourself out indeed. My goodness, her pulling yourself out involved a wonderful climb of top of a big, huge mountain. <laughs> this is true, Mount Kilimanjaro, 19,341 feet. So it was a tribute to myself to prove to myself that I still had it. I could do big things um, and I could rock it. And I did. And it was very transformational and very spiritual. And I'm glad I did it. I recommend it highly for anybody and everybody. That's right. And she did it when she was 16, y'all. That's right. 60. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, 61. I was 61 when I did it. Hate to say it. Eh, ain't no hate to say it. That's freaking amazing. Like, that's freaking awesome. Like, you know how many folks under 61 can't even go five miles, let alone 19 plus thousand feet of mountain climbing? <laughs> yeah, this is true. That's right, indeed. So, my goodness, how was the preparation process for that? I trained really hard. Like, I think people thought you didn't really need to train hard and it showed when they got there and they really, uh, I rocked it. I had no trouble and I was, I couldn't even go with the rest of the team. I mean, I didn't know the people, but we were part of team and training for leukemia. And so I was older than everybody and I ended up getting my own guides. I mean, there were so many guides. But so it wasn't a big deal, but I, I didn't want to go at the pace that other people were going and I wanted to go at my pace. This was something I trained for. I didn't want to do my journey on how other people trained. I wanted to do my journey on making it the best possible way for me. And I had trained that way. And so I did it my way and it was great. I loved it. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Putting the young whippersnappers to shame. That's right. Correct. Correct. <laughs> that's right, indeed. I'm guessing all the years of being a personal trainer on top of that helped too, right? Totally. I mean, that's why I knew how to train for it. And I was in great shape. And I live in, I live in Aspen, Colorado. So I live at 7,500 feet. So my hikes are taking me to 11, 12, 13,000 feet. So I definitely had that advantage. Uh, that's what I'm talking about, that great advantage indeed. So my goodness, so I'm pretty sure this mindset wasn't developed overnight with all the years of training on top of that to be able to keep that great shape. So what do you think helped you to keep that great shape for your body and your mind? Well, I've always been into health and wellness and I've always having a good body has always been important for me. So I think that it's part of my self-worth, not everybody's, but for me, it definitely was part of my self-worth, probably more than I wish it was. And um, I'm an endorphin junkie. You know, I'm not an adrenaline junkie. I don't need speed. I don't need fear, but I need a lot of exercise. So I'm, I'm pretty much addicted to exercise Although I've balanced it in, in, you know, I've learned to balance it. It was a big deal for me to learn to balance it, but I have. So that's what I get off on. You know, everyone's got their thing. I'm an endorphin junkie. And so the more exercise I get and the more I'm outside in nature, the better I feel. And that's what keeps me rolling. Ah, uh, that's what I'm talking about indeed. Making the eggs happy. Egg rolling indeed. Keeps it rolling. That's what I'm talking about indeed. That's actually the first time I've ever heard of being an endorphin junkie because you always hear adrenaline junkie, but you never hear endorphin junkie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I've heard it before either, but that's actually what I am. I like that. I like that endorphin high. I mean, who doesn't like that endorphin high? You know, you can get it from dancing. You can get it from a lot of things, but 
exercise is one of them. And so I feel at my best when I've started my day working out. Ah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So my goodness, so since you're all about always getting better and not butter. <laughs> so what have you been working on recently to continue to keep up with your growth mindset? Because I'm pretty sure you've been learning something new on top of everything else you've been doing. I am. I'm actually in two certifications right now. One is called Jump Coaching. It's Jump and Your Life Will Appear, which is basically similar to my Bigger, Better, Braver Coaching. And then I'm also taking, um, I'm becoming a grief facilitator with David Kessler. I don't know if you know who that is, but he he worked, he wrote all the books with um, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross that I took in college. So he's been around a long time on death and dying, grief and grieving, the meaning of loss. And so I'm, that's, that's what I'm doing now. And I have a new course that's out on Gen Connect You called um, Career Strategies for Living Your Most Purposeful Life. And that's out. My Bigger, Better, Braver course is out. My one-on-one coaching is still happening. And I'm just starting to work on putting together a retreat to someplace great and working with a woman that I recently met while I was a presenter at Rancho La Porta. She does like beach boot camps and dance classes and aerobic workouts. And we're going to do an inner and outer fitness retreat. And um, I wish I had more information, but that's really... That's as far as we've gotten that we want to do this together. And so that's going to be my jump. You know, that's going to be my bigger, better, braver next move. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Sounds like it's going to be great. <laughs> I'm hoping so. Some fun in the sun with some good life coaching and good exercise all together. There you go. Fun in the sun. So that means sun's out, buns out, y'all. That's right. Guns out too in this case, personal trainer, baby. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. So my goodness, so speaking of jumping, you got this marvelous book, Bigger, Better, Braver. So what inspired the title? What was the writing process like for the book? Well, the title was really hard because I had, you know, I had a bunch of people who were in my inner circle and every time I'd come up with a title nobody liked it or some people liked it but not everybody liked any title right and they kept saying no just write them down write them down make a list don't worry about it. just keep going i mean at one point i thought it was going to be what's your kilimanjaro you know like how do you live bigger you don't have to climb a mountain but how do you live bigger and then i realized nobody's going to read that book unless they think they're planning on climbing kilimanjaro so that's not a good book and one night at two o'clock in the morning, I sat up in bed and said, bigger, better, braver, just like that. I mean, it was a download from the universe and I know it was a download from the universe because everyone loved it. Just like that. The tagline, bigger, better, braver, conquer your fears, embrace your courage and transform your life. That was really hard. Like we could not I knew I wanted like three things. We couldn't figure it out. We played with it for months and eventually it came together and I I love it. I'm proud of the book. The book is a step-by-step process on how to uncover your vision of what your bigger, better, braver, what does that mean to you? It could be changing a job. It could be getting into a relationship. It could be leaving a relationship. It could be moving across the country. It could be losing 20 pounds, whatever you've always wanted to do or, and you just are afraid to do it, or you think it's not your time. You know, you've got all these shadow beliefs. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. It's not my time. It's not for me. That's for other people. I'm afraid, I can't do it, I'm stupid. All of these things that are core beliefs that are hidden in our subconscious, I help you uncover those and I help you do it as a coach and I help you do it in the book so that you can then free yourself of the beliefs that you don't even know are keeping you stuck so you can move forward. So it's a step-by-step 
it's 10 chapters on how to do it. I recommend people read the whole book and then go back and do all the exercises and step by step to you make your bigger, better, braver move. Oh, the three big goodness babies. That's right. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. Because a darn good title. It came from the universe of download. It descended from the heavens like the Nike logo. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> That's right indeed. Uh, that's right indeed. So my goodness, so those darn evil limiting beliefs. What was probably one major one that you had to get rid of that you ended up putting in the book that helped you to really be the personification of, hey, I'm a life coach who actually lived life here that can actually help you out? I'm not safe alone. So when I was five years old, I was playing with a lighter and I, I lit my party dress that I was wearing my whole body went up in flames and I was in the hospital for a week. I was burnt all over, but they were first and second degree burns. So honestly, I wasn't left with any scars. I never got in trouble because my parents were happy I was alive. I never really thought it, 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 it was like a major effect on my life. I remember it, you know, it's a fun story to tell people, oh yeah, that's what I did, you know, but I didn't, I really didn't affect me. And then fast forward many, many years, and I was 50 and I was in a car accident. And again, I almost died just like the first time. And I had a coach at the time. And so when I was working with the coach, she took me in and did a whole session like I do. And what, what came out of it was this little girl inside of me was saying, I'm not safe alone. And I was like, oh, my God, like I didn't even like I felt like I was in an exorcism. I didn't know she was in there and I didn't know that she had that that was happening. But it made so much sense to me. Like that's part of the reason why my divorce was so hard for me and that I was trying to fix that picture and that I oh, I, I, I had a man in my life since I was 13. I was never without a boyfriend ever. I didn't know, but it makes so much sense. So that's how these core beliefs happen. Something happens, we give it a meaning, it gets buried in our subconscious. We're not even aware of it. It's formed to keep us safe. So they do keep us safe until they stop keeping us safe. They keep us safe and then all of a sudden we're an adult. So, you know, another example is, you know, you could be a nine-year-old kid in class and you stand up and you read a passage and you say something wrong and everyone laughs at you. You make a decision that you're stupid and then you make a commitment to yourself to always stay quiet so no one will know. That keeps you safe in school. You don't give your opinions and you don't people don't think you, people don't know whether you're smart or not because you never share your opinion. And so you go through life and you feel okay. Well, now you're 30 years old and you're in corporate world and you're in meetings and you never share your opinion. And then you get passed over job after job after job because people think you don't even have an opinion. So that's just one example. There's a million of them. I My needs don't matter. I'm unlovable. I'll never be worthy. Uh, my voice doesn't matter. I need to be perfect to be loved. I need to control everything to be safe. These are all examples of beliefs that so many people hold. And they, they are formed as a child to keep you safe. But as an adult, they keep you small. Mm. Mm. That's how I'm talking about. Indeed. So right about that indeed. That's right indeed. Last thing you want to be is a small adult <laughs> by choice. Right. That is. <laughs> right. Yeah. You don't want to, you, you want to, I think people think that you have to be that people who are successful are fearless and that's not true. Nobody, there's, you're never going to be in a fearless state. You're just going to do it anyway. You're going to have faith that the universe has your back. And whatever happens is supposed to happen. If you fall, you fall forward because you're trying something new and you feel so good about yourself for trying something new that the failure is just a stepping stone. Okay, pick yourself up. Let's go again. You know, let's keep going. What can I learn from this? What can I do differently? 
and you just feel so good about yourself. I don't think sitting on the couch and not and living in fear and living in your excuses ever make you feel good about yourself. So, I mean, when you looked at all those certifications, it's because I have a growth mindset. I'm always trying to learn more, be more, help my clients with more tools. And there's no way I can ever stop doing that. And that makes me feel good about myself. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm feeling good indeed. That's right indeed, folks. That's right. She's feeling so good. She's going to need a new house soon with all these certifications, y'all. She's running out of space. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to be bigger, yeah. y'all. That's right indeed. So since you have all this wonderful knowledge, I'm pretty sure you know that failures are setbacks. So what would you consider your greatest setback that actually sets you up for success? Oh, my divorce. Yeah, totally. I would never be the woman I am today. I was living in the shadow of my ex-husband because he that's what he needed. And I used to be a people pleaser and an overdoer and an overgiver. And uh, I was always thought that it was my job. Love and life meant taking care of the people I love. So I overdid and I overgave and all of those things. And um, I'm not that person anymore. I have great boundaries. I take care of myself. Self-care is really a big part of setting healthy boundaries. I'm no longer a people pleaser. I'm no longer a conflict avoider. And I'm no longer other referenced. So that was the biggest thing that happened to me was that I always saw myself through the eyes of my ex-husband and I no longer do that. I am really, I love myself. I trust myself. And so I know when I'm doing well and who I am and I don't need other people's opinions or I just don't, I stand on my own and I'm really good in a good space so I'm self-referenced instead of other referenced. And that's probably the biggest change in my life. Ah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. No longer others, y'all. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. That full confidence on display now, y'all. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So, fun question we're loving to drop on, folks. So if your wonderful book, Bigger, Better, Braver, was a food, what would it be and why? Jeez. <laughs> Oh God. Uh, <laughs> if it was a food, I think it would have to be something hot and spicy. And I don't know, maybe it's like a jalapeno pepper, you know, something that's challenging and hot, but actually when you take it, it's really good for your body and it stimulates your body and it burns more calories and it's good for your digestion. So it's kind of a crazy question, I will tell you that. But with that, that's my answer. There you go, folks. Jalapeno goodness, baby. It's spicy. It's hot. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. It's good for you. It's good for you indeed. There there will be movement that will be happening after you read this book, y'all. That's right. <laughs> that's right indeed. That's right indeed. Well, we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive. And that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but you're still in 2022 <sighs> with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Oh, I think it would be to make myself a priority and not look outside myself for validation, to know who I am and to listen to my internal wisdom and to know that the universe has my back and everything is for me not to me and that would probably be great advice oh yeah that's what i'm talking about indeed folks that's right indeed that's right indeed that's right indeed rock solid advice y'all that's right indeed it's like a whole pebble necklace y'all it's rock solid that's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. <laughs> so for those who need to get some pebbles of all of your wonderful work that you do and check out your book and all the wonderful stuff that you're doing along your journey, what's the best way for folks to do so? 
nancypicardlifecoach.com. It's my website. And I think that you have in your show notes also my freebies. I give a free chapter. I give a, I offer a free discovery call for anybody who's even thinking that life coaching might be something that they could use the support. And, you know, as a personal trainer, I like to say nobody gets to the Olympics without a coach. And life is the same way. We all need support. So uh, nancypicardlifecoach.com, everything is there. My book is on Amazon. My book is on everything. Bigger, better, braver, conquer your fears, embrace your courage and transform your life. And if you are interested, you can download the first chapter for free. And that will give you a really good idea as to whether or not this is something that's for you. Woohoo! Stop talking about D. That's right, D. We're going to put the wonderful website link to Nancy's marvelous site in the show notes and deeds. That way you can check out all of her wonderful wares and buy some copies of your book and share it with your friends and family. Heck, even share with some camels and penguins indeed. Heck, maybe share with some elephants too. They could use that love indeed because they got a whole bunch of wisdom. And Nancy's got wisdom too because she's even got clients in their 80s, y'all. So that's right. So she's doing the good work, y'all. That's right. And Indeed. So any parting words before we close up shop, Nancy? I love the saying that even the last the last person in the race beats the person on the couch. So just get out there. Just get out there. There's no safety in your comfort zone. There's no growth in your comfort zone. And there's no courage and confidence and self-love sitting in the in your comfort zone just get out one tiny step at a time how's it going my friend i'm so glad you made it to the end that shows that you are an uncommon finisher and i am so grateful for you sharing your ears your attention and your time to this wonderful podcast to do something that'll take yourself to the next level and for everybody else involved in this wonderful program share with with at least three people in your network so that way more folks can be inspired to be their best 